Good morning, everybody. You know, the last few weeks, from the perspective of the human family, knowing that we're all God's children, it's been a rough few weeks, hasn't it? A few Saturdays ago, that earthquake hit in Haiti. And just a few days later, that was on Saturday, on a Monday, a tropical storm. What was the result? Over 2,000 deaths of our brothers and sisters. Over 12,000 injured. And nearly 53,000, think of that, 53,000 houses destroyed. It's been a rough few weeks for the human family. And then there's the pandemic. COVID-19, the Delta variant is causing havoc all over the world. As of today, there's about four and a half million, four and a half million deaths worldwide. The number of cases and deaths are now rising exponentially, even here locally in Kentucky. Our Kentucky hospitals are close to being stretched beyond their capacity. There was a doctor here last night who's at uh, UK. She said they're shutting down some beds and moving more and more staff to take care of the overwhelming COVID patients they have. UK, a big center has, like ours, has 13 ECMO machines, all of them being used now. She said they're about to run out of the antibody each life, brothers and sisters in Christ, every life affected, every life affected is a beloved child of God. So if you haven't gotten the vaccine yet, and I'm speaking as a physician now, if you haven't got it, please reconsider. Every life, everybody affected is a beloved child of God. God does not discriminate on our skin color, where we're from, our nationality. Everyone is a child of God. Who cannot be brought to tears from looking at those pictures from Afghanistan? The deaths of our own military personnel, the deaths of innocent Afghanis, those left who fear for their lives, young girls and women raped, minimal hope for a better life. And who isn't especially touched by the Afghani parents who I can't imagine what it would feel like, but I can't imagine the desperation that a, parish must ha that a parent must have in desperation as they take their young baby, their young child, and handing them over fences and barbed wire to our military personnel, just hoping for any chance for their child to live a better life with us. All those mentioned above, every single one of them, all children of God, our brothers and sisters. The Category 4 hurricane, as we are speaking, is striking the Gulf Coast. Evacuations have been taking place. Glenn Gramillion, one of our parishioners, has family members there. His people can't get out of New Orleans right now. They're just going to have to hunker down. But I said, Glenn, how does it look down there? He said, Father, it looks bad. He said, let me put it this way. There are people who are alive today who will not be alive tomorrow. There are structures that are standing today that will not be standing tomorrow. Everyone affected. Everyone affected, a beloved child of God, a brother and sister of ours in Christ. It's been a tough few weeks for the human family. I have so, so many questions, but not many answers. I have a couple. Here's one. First, we need to stick together as one human family. From Haiti to Afghanistan, from New Orleans to Kentucky, we are all in this together. We are all God's children. As I mentioned, God does not discriminate on who his children are and who he loves. He loves us all. Stick together as one human family. So brothers and sisters in Christ, help when you can. For God's sake, let us be good to each other. Let us be kind to each other. 
One human family. One human family. Second, prayer. That's what we're going to do in just a second. We're going to have a moment of silent prayer. And we're going to pray for the coming of the kingdom of God. We're going to pray that this kingdom comes quickly. We're going to pray for all those affected. We're going to pray for all those who live in fear. And yes, as Christians, we will pray for our enemies. Prayer. God is always faithful to his promises. And I know I have faith that somehow God will bring great good from all of this. And that God, that Jesus, will one day set all things right. So let's take just a moment of prayer to pray for all that's going on and to pray for our brothers and sisters both locally and abroad. Amen. You know, the word hero is used very cavalierly these days, I think. But I think we are living in the presence of true heroes, and that is our health care workers. Governor Bashir has asked Kentuckians to thank the health care workers for their sacrifice during this past year as they have led this battle against uh, COVID-19. We have many here in our congregation. We've had them at every mass. If not, they're, they're watching on, uh, on the internet. So what I'd like to do is for us to show our appreciation for all those who are in the healthcare field and all they've done and what they continue to do to help lead this fight, helping us in this COVID pandemic. So if you're in the healthcare field, please stand up. Thank you. Now I want all of us to stand and let's give them a sign of our appreciation for what they're doing. Thank you. Please be seated. Just one more last thing for me, and it's another positive thing we can do. For our parish, this is Sign Up Sunday weekend. And we can show our solidarity with our faith community here at Holy Spirit Parish, the Newman Center, for volunteering for positions that are integral, integral for us to come here and worship God in the Mass. So today's sign up is for, our, is for liturgical roles. And this is not a trivial ask, right? This is, not a, this is not trivial things we can do. This is integral to who we are as Catholics in these liturgical roles where we can come and worship God the way Jesus desires to be worshiped. We'll have another sign up Sunday for all of our Newman Serves programs, all our service social justice ministries. That'll be September 18th and 19th. But today it's for volunteers for our liturgical services. So I'm going to turn this over to Mary and she'll walk through the sign-up process with us.